Creating a survival Minecraft server starts off with downloading the Minecraft server files, which you can find a link to in the description down below. Specifically, that link will take you here. This is our website where we have an in-depth text guide on starting a Minecraft server. This will start a survival server by default, and that's actually what's really cool. Survival servers are vanilla Minecraft servers just by default. You can then make those servers creative, for example, but by default, they're survival, so that's what we're going to be going over in this video. Now, once you're here, you want to go ahead and click download. At this time, when you click download, it will start downloading instantly the minecraft server.jar file once you keep or save the file but that's because Mojang's website for that's currently down. In the future, it may take you to Mojang's website where you'll need to download it. But nevertheless, once you've got this downloaded, we can go ahead and get the server started. However, I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour server. This is a server that's only up and running when your computer is up and running, and it's not meant for a public server. It's not meant to be public. It's only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust, because it runs on your own internet connection, meaning anyone who gets the IP address to this server can DDoS you, which means hit your internet offline and make it really slow and make it not work as well as figure out where you live down to the latitude and longitude coordinates. So it's super important to only give this to your friends and family. Plus, you're going to need a pretty good computer to run this server. However, if you don't want to have to worry about any of that, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash simple, and start your very own 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server, where you don't have to worry about your computer's hardware, you don't have to worry about your internet connection or your IP address getting out or anything like that, and you don't have to worry about setting up the server. It's all done in under five minutes, and all you've got to do is log into an account and get an IP address and you're playing on your survival Minecraft server. It's that quick and easy. You can also have mods and mod packs to the server and truly customize the server any way that you want. Plus, there's expert live chat support there to help you out. So if you want to make a server the simplest and easiest way possible, that's why Simple Game Hosting exists. So go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple and start your Minecraft server the simple way in just a few minutes. Nevertheless, if you don't want to start a server with Simple Game Hosting, we've got the server.jar downloaded. Let's go ahead and right click and create a new folder on our desktop and let's title that survival minecraft server because well we're starting a survival minecraft server here then we want to find that server.jar file we downloaded now for me i know that's going to be in my downloads folder so we can go right over here to my downloads folder and there it is but for you it's going to be wherever files typically download on your computer then we want to move that server file into that folder we created on our desktop so in my case that's survival minecraft server and here it is that server file now if it doesn't say dot jar at the end go up to view and make sure file name extensions here is checked and then it will now all we've got to do to start this server is double click on it when you double click on it it should generate some files and folders and things like that including an eola.txt file which it does for us here but if that doesn't work for you it's because you need to get java specifically you need java 21 for minecraft now as you can see for 1.20.5 plus minecraft you need java 21 soon we won't even be offering the java 17 download only the java 21 download this guide shows you how to get it how to install it how to do everything you need to know to get Java 21 set up for Minecraft and Minecraft servers. You may also need to run the jar fix after you get Java 21. First get Java 21, then run this, the jar fix. And all this is going to do is take the jar files, like that server.jar, and link it back to your computer, making them work happily together. So first, download Java, then run this jar fix file. Now at this point though, we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and we want to open up, after you've double clicked that server.jar and generated it, the eola.txt file. Now this will open up in Notepad, right like so, and then assuming we agree to the Minecraft eola, which we do, we want to change eula equals false to eula equals true, t-r-u-e, exactly like that, and then just click file and save. Save the eula.txt file, and now watch this. When you double click on that server.jar, your server is actually going to start. Now at this moment, you are the only person that can join your server, but it's still cool to go ahead and do that. So, well, let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and open up Minecraft and we'll join this server just to prove that it's working. And then we'll talk about how your friends can join it. All right. So here we are. The server is started and Minecraft is open to join it. And again, you're the only person that can join it like this, but go to multiplayer and then you want to go ahead and add a server. You can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it local connection because this is a local connection that only you can use. And then the server address, we'll just do local host, right? Like so, and click done finds the server there and we can double click on the local connection and we'll see it join in here on the left hand side. This is a great way to test your server and you can run around, make sure that the server's not lagging and stuff like that because if it's lagging in this environment with just you on it, it's definitely going to be lagging when you get a bunch of friends on the server. So keep that in mind. Um, but at this point, you now know how to make a server and get it set up. And this is survival. As you can see, we've got, you know, our health here. We've got our um, chicken nuggets or our, our food bar as well. And we can, uh, yeah, just run around and survive in 
Minecraft. Now, I'm sure you want your friends to join the server as well, and in order for them to join, you're going to need to port forward. Now, unfortunately, due to the YouTube algorithm, they don't like us going into super depth on videos anymore. We always do a major video for every Minecraft release, though, so be sure to subscribe and on the lookout for that if you want it. That does do everything in one video, including port forwarding, but because of the YouTube algorithm, we have this guide in the description, which is an in-depth, specific guide on port forwarding for a Minecraft server. We've obviously got this video up here that goes super in-depth, and we have this, which is an in-depth text guide. So whether you enjoy a text guide or a video guide, we have you covered to ensure that you can port forward and allow your friends to join your server. Some other helpful guides in the description, how to add more RAM to your server. If your server is lagging, you could try this before writing it off because you might just need to dedicate more RAM to it, assuming you have, you know, 30 2 gigs of RAM or at least 16 gigs of RAM to both play Minecraft and dedicate some RAM to the server. We also have this, which is uh, something to run into after port forwarding. You might need to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. Let's say you've port forwarded and your friends can't join. This might be why. And lastly, there's this, which is nearly 30 minutes, 21 minutes of me going through fixing broken stuff on Minecraft servers. It's kind of interesting. Just sit back, relax, and watch it and pick up different things that you might want to look for when you're working on a Minecraft server. Now that you're hosting a server, having all this knowledge of what could go wrong, even if it's not went wrong yet, it might be something that you want to watch and get familiar with. That way, when something does go wrong, you've got an idea. But at this point, our server is up and running in survival. Once you port forward, your friends will be able to join it, and you'll be able to play survival Minecraft together. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, let us know in the comments, and we will see you in the next video. I'm out. Peace.